Knee x-rays are an important part of working a patient up for any sort of knee pain or dysfunction. In this video, we're going to take a look at what an actual knee x-ray looks like. Knee pain has many different causes, and in order to evaluate a patient's knee pain, it's important to get a good set of quality x-rays that lets us take a good look at all aspects of the knee. X-rays are really good at getting a nice initial overview of the joint. Getting an x-ray is easy, and an x-ray tech will help get you positioned for the best x-rays. There are four main x-rays that we obtain when initially evaluating knee pain. This first x-ray is called the AP view and it's looking straight at the knee. The second x-ray is called the lateral view and it looks in from the side. The third x-ray here is called a sunrise view or also called a merchant view and this looks straight down the patellofemoral joint also called the kneecap joint. And finally, this x-ray is called a flexed knee view, or often called a Rosenberg view, and this takes a look at a little bit different area, especially of the thigh bone and what we call the femoral condyles. So this is an x-ray looking directly at a patient's knee, and we call this the AP view. And to start things off, down here uh, towards the bottom of the screen, you can see an L, which designates the patient's left knee. And if you look closely, there's a circle with three little dots in it. And that's actually a marker that shows that, uh, that shows the dots being pulled downward with gravity. And that means that this extra was taken with the patient standing upright. You can see some of this gray area here and here and running down the leg. That's the soft tissue, the skin, and some of the muscle, and you can see that pretty well in this patient, but an x-ray isn't the best imaging study to look at soft tissue. Um, and the, if you're really interested in looking at that, probably an MRI scan would be a better option there. Turning to the bones, you can see this is the thigh bone, so I'll outline that for you. So here comes the thigh bone, kind of runs down in this direction. And then this is the shin bone right here. And then finally, there's a smaller bone here called the fibula, Oop. called the fibula. And so the thigh bone we call the femur, the shin bone we call the tibia, and then here's the smaller bone of the lower leg called the fibula. If you look closely, you can see this structure right here in front of the knee, and that's actually the kneecap, the patella. If you look down at these uh, areas here of the thigh bone, these are called the condyles. And so if this is the outer side of the knee, uh, we refer to that as lateral. If this is the inner side of the knee, we refer that to as medial. And so we call this the medial femoral condyle, and we call this the lateral femoral condyle. The part of the shin bone that sort of flares out down this way, and then again over here, we call the tibial plateau. And the area in this location is called the medial tibial plateau. And then the area over here is called the lateral tibial plateau. These two little bumps here are the tibial eminences. And this area of the fibula, this broader area, we call the fibular head. Now I can zoom in a little bit and we can get a good close-up look and you can see where the thigh bone meets the shin bone on both the medial and lateral sides and you can see that there's space right here and this space is made up of cartilage and the cartilage does not show up on an x-ray and so when you see space between the bones that's a good thing because that means that there's healthy cartilage in between the bones there so that's the AP view and we'll take a look at some of the other views of the knee. Okay, so in this next view we have uh, referred to as a lateral knee x-ray and this is looking at the knee from the side, not from the front but from the side. And again we can see it's a patient's left knee. We can see that the patient is standing because of the uh, three uh, beads down here and also uh, it's saying that it's upright so sometimes it says that sometimes it doesn't. 
Uh, once again, we can see some of the soft tissue, skin, and some of the underlying muscle. And then here is the, sorry, here, right here where my cursor is, here is the femur. And you can see how the femur sort of curves back this way, and then curves back around, and then back around towards the front of the knee, and then back up the thigh bone. And so that's how the uh, femur looks when viewed from the side. And these areas down through here are actually the femoral condyles that we uh, first pointed out in our AP video. So you get a good look at those. And then here's the patella, or the kneecap. Here's the shin bone, or tibia. And you can see how that goes all the way up towards the joint. And you can see the joint line is actually sloped backwards just a little bit. And then this flares down and heads back down the uh, tibia, down to the shaft of the tibia. You can see the fibula here, fibular head, where it's wide up towards the top, towards the knee joint. And then it runs down into the fibular shaft down this way. We mentioned the tibial eminences that we could see those two spikes on the AP view, and you can see them right here on this view as well, and you can see how they sort of bump up like that. This line right here is referred to as Blumensatz line, and then this line right here, this curved white line, is actually the trochlea, which is a groove that the kneecap sort of guides itself into. And we'll get a better view of that on the next view. Again, if we, we'll zoom in one more time, you can see this white line here, and you can see the bone right through here. And you can see, actually, there's space between this line and this line, and that's that joint space that's filled with the cartilage. Also worth pointing out, I'll zoom in one more time, you can just make out this little bump right here. I'll play with the contrast, maybe brighten it up a little bit. So you can just make out this little bump right here. We call that the tibial tubercle, and that's actually the attachment site of the patella tendon, which you can't really see on this, but the patella tendon runs from the inferior pole of the patella, which is this, uh, this pointed area along the patella, and then that patella tendon runs right down through here. You can just make out this subtle line. That's the patella tendon, and it attaches to the shin bone right there. In this third view, uh, we call the view a sunrise view and we call it that because you can see uh, this bone right here is called uh, the patella and it's sort of like a sunrise coming up over the horizon right here on the thigh bone so in order to kind of understand what we're looking at here is the we're sort of taking a look straight down the kneecap joint and so this is the patella that I'm outlining right there and this is the thigh bone or the femur and this is the outline of it as well and if you'll notice there's this v-shaped area and that's called the trochlea and the trochlea is a groove that has the uh, or the, that provides a um, sort of a guide that the kneecap can uh, glide back and forth into sort of like a, a bobsled going down a bobsled course so you can see how the v-shaped joint side of the kneecap is right here and then it matches up with this trochlea side right here and that's really sort of the main thing that we're looking for on uh, on this particular image okay so in this final view we're looking at a view of the knee looking straight at the knee but a little bit different uh, positioning of the patient so I'll zoom in just a little bit and so we call this a notch view. Some people call it a Rosenberg view. And this is because the patient's knee is flexed or bent, maybe 30 or so degrees uh, during the x-ray. And what this does is, uh, is allow us to see the femoral condyles, which is, again, these areas right here. They allow us to see the femoral condyles in a little bit different location which also provides us additional information as to what the actual joint looks like. And so, pointing this out, up here is the thigh bone or the femur. This is heading up towards the shaft, up towards the thigh, and this flares out into the medial femoral condyle, which is the condyle on the inner side of the knee. 
and then you can see the lateral femoral condyle, which is over here. What you'll notice is, uh, is a, this notch, which is obviously why some people refer to this as a notch view, and this notch becomes more visible with the knee in a bent position. And there, you also might notice a small little groove right here. Uh, that's a groove for a tendon called the popliteus tendon. Again, we have the tibia, the tibial plateau, medial tibial plateau, tibial eminences, the lateral tibial plateau, and then again the fibula, the fibular head, and heading down to the fibular shaft. If I zoom in a little bit closer, we can get a good look at the joint space. So here's the femoral condyle, here's the tibial plateau, and then right in this area is the joint space. In fact, I'll, I'll do a little measuring here for you. So I can measure from here to here, and that's the actual joint space. What you see up here is sort of the, um, the overlapping of part of the shin bone um, through the, uh, as the x-ray shoots through. And so this is actually the joint space here. And then right here, this is the actual joint space right there. And so you can see in this particular patient, there's about five millimeters of joint space here and about five millimeters of joint space right there. And you can do these measurements um, on really uh, any view. So we'll delete that and I will, uh, sh let's split the screen up and I'm gonna show you the difference between the regular AP view and the actual flex knee view. So there we go. So I'll zoom in on this side, and we'll zoom in on this side, and then let me reposition the image a little bit. So you can see the difference. So over here on the left is our traditional AP view, and then over here on the right is the Rosenberg or notch view. So you can definitely see the difference. Here's the notch, you get a little bit of a hint of the notch, but not quite like on the other side. And so if I pull up the lateral now, let me play with the color a little bit. And so I'll draw a line. So the x-ray on the notch view actually catches more of the patient's knee in this location. Uh, so you can get a, a sort of a look with the x-ray in the back of the femoral condyles, as opposed to um, the more traditional x-ray which catches the, uh, the view from right here. And so that's why this x-ray can be really helpful in uh, getting a complete look at the patient's knee. So in summary, getting a quality set of x-rays including weight-bearing x-rays are essential when evaluating a patient with any sort of knee pain or knee dysfunction. There are many different causes for knee pain and x-rays are really the best initial study to get to come up with a or with an accurate diagnosis so that a patient can get placed on the most appropriate treatment path moving forward.